Hello everybody, this is Piteio from Vale of the Ages. And now that our Kickstarter campaign is over, we know which components will go into our starter set, the Breach. And uh, we know that we will have two miniatures, uh, an elf and an orc. And we know that we will have a number of cards, nine cards with unit stats and scenarios to play, and the two dice to play with. Now, some people on the forum agreed that the thing that's needed the most into this starter set is terrain pieces, and I agree with that as well, and that's the reason why it was set as the first stretch goal in, uh, um, in, our, in our list of stretch goals. Now, uh, we definitely want to have new players to enjoy the tactical component of having to moving around terrain. But again, if I put it as a stretch goal, it's technically because it's impossible for me to produce them and keep the prices that I put up for the uh, Kickstarter campaign. So, since Hoffa seemed to be very annoyed by the lack of terrain, I said, we have to make Hoffa happy and we have to find a solution. And I thought, now imagine that you have been playing scenario number one, the one for shooting, scenario number two, the one for charging, and scenario number three, the one for combat, for example. Okay? You've taken your two uh, miniatures and you've played with them against each other. These are not the miniatures that will be in the starter set, it's just miniatures from Admiralty Miniatures and from Little Joe that I happen to have at, at home. And so, what was I saying? You play the first three scenarios, you get to the fourth where you have movement, and then you get to the fifth where you have, when you have terrain. And uh, you say, ah, oh, oh, how am I gonna place it? I don't have any terrain. I should be able to play all of the scenarios with what comes out of the box. And the solution would be, since you've learned what happens in these three scenarios already, and you're learning the one about terrain, I can print a drawing of the terrain at the back of the card, all right? I can do one for the obstruction, I can do one for cover, and I can do one for the elevated terrain, because these are the three terrain types that we have in the breach. So, thing will go like that. You place your warrior there, then we said 24 inches, all right, put that there, and then you scatter some terrain in the middle. You put some cover area here, you put an elevation there, and you put an obstruction in here, for example, right? So that by turn number one, our uh, blunderbussing dwarf might decide to march over here and then up to the zone of the dryad, riot. All right, so this is, this is the cost zero operation. I can do this. I want to put terrain into the box. I cannot put it as a separate piece because that would increase the production costs, that would increase the weight of the box, that would increase the shipping and the logistics, and the freighting costs, and so I really cannot do that. This is the solution that we can play with, but this is just the beginning because we can improve on that, we can build on that, and we can actually actively induce new players to engage with the other components of the hobby. We want them to learn the rules and enjoy the tactical fun, but we also want them to, you know, start sculpting and having fun with the other components of the hobby. This is Little Joe again. Thank you. Made this piece. So, I thought, why not suggest people, new players, that they get a uh, wooden or any other sort of baseboard and then they cut little rectangles in the shape and size of a card, right? You do that, then you take some foam, uh, you know, polystyrene, whatever type of modeling foam you have available, and with some glue, you glue it on top of the baseboard. And for example, here, you would have something that's like an, uh, an obstruction because this is a, um, a walled section. And if I have my dwarf in here, then my dryad will not be able to see it and we'll have to go back. And uh, what do we do for a, uh, an elevation? Well, you know, we can make a, a ziggurat type of thing with concentrically smaller things on top of each other, like a bit of a pyramid. 
you know you can get creative it's just three terrain pieces it's just elevation obstruction and cover and to build them you only need baseboard a bit of foam some glue to glue stuff on top and then of course something to cut this is both to cut the baseboard but also to make some dents into the uh, into the walls here so that they look like bricks and uh, then maybe you can add two colors black and white and a brush done that's it you, you can add flock you can add uh, grass synthetic grass whatever but actually with a very basic number of elements you can get a nice obstruction a uh, this is a bit larger than, uh, than the ones that we will need nice platform maybe a broken statue or something like that and uh, to, to get a cover terrain and my thinking was if you guys um, want to participate into this and show that even with what you've got out of the um, out of the uh, starter set you can actually make terrain functioning for the game that you, uh, you have to play with a baseboard and some foam glue a cutter and a couple of colors and a brush that would be amazing it's like it, it's, it's going to be a small piece you can make a uh, I don't know six by eight or six by nine centimeters what would that be what would that be two inches and a half times three inches and a half something like that um, size of terrain pieces you create two or three you take pictures you write a small accompaniment text or maybe you can make a video that's that's fine both both are fine by me and then if you submit them back to the forum then uh, we can let the community decide which ones are the ones that need the most discussion and we can have a nice you know live stream chat or recorded chat the way we've done it on the on the veil of the ages youtube channel in the past you can decide the exact size of the terrain components you can decide the slant that you want to give to the tutorial. I was emphasizing you need two materials, you need two tools, you need two colors, done. But you can also emphasize other aspects. You can also make the best looking terrain pieces. You can make the easiest to transport terrain pieces, the lightweight ones. You can make the extra durable ones. You can make the ones that are ready for being used in large numbers at tournaments, for example. Uh, I, I see lots of people going to tournaments and say, ah, ah, 2D terrain. I mean, pro tournament players usually don't complain about that, but more fluff-oriented players do. And uh, when they complain about that, you could say, yeah, but you can play something on top. Yes, let's do that. Let's just make a tutorial and show how to make a large number of superposable, superposable 3D ruin cover terrain that can be used to decorate um, regular fields whatever you want just keep it short <laughs> something that i'm not able to do i wanted to make a five minutes video i never manage always longer than that keep it short five minutes just the basics send me the pictures and we can have a conversation and a voice over um, over that or maybe do a video and um you know let's take care of all of the components of our game the hobby component the rules component the fluff component the miniatures component I'm going to try and make a video every week about these different aspects and uh, see whether you want to participate and uh, you know join the fun in the community. This is all for today. I hope to see many tutorials uh, with text, pictures and maybe videos coming for you. This is all. Bye guys.